so I will be reading Baseball from Soaking to Satchel. And then at the end of the story, I'm going to ask you some questions from the book. Okay, so it's the bottom of the ninth and your baseball team is down by one run. You're up first. Before you leave the bench, Coach Woods whispering in your ear says, Get on base and the others will move you along to home plate. Yours will be the run we need to tie the score. Then you do it. You get on first base and wait for the next batter to move you along. The second batter strikes out. Then the third batter comes up. He hits a ground ball and is tagged out at first. You move on to second base. You wonder whether you will get to home, get to cross home plate. Maybe, but there are already two outs. Suddenly, home plate looks very, very far away. Here's a picture of a baseball field. So here's first base. And then, um, second base is over here, which is where our character is at right now. Baseball begins. If you think about when baseball first began, that seems far away too. Baseball was first played in the United States in the mid-1800s. However, a game very much like it was played long before that. That game was called Rounders, and it was played in England as early as the 1600s, as in baseball. A rounders players had to hit a ball with a bat and then move around the bases. That much was the same as baseball today. But one big difference was the way fielders put out base runners. They did not try to tag them. Instead, they threw the ball at the runners. If the ball hit the runner, he was out. This was called soaking or plugging the runner. Here's a picture. How did you get from rounders to baseball? History tells us that American colonists played rounders in the 1700s. They called it by different names though. Sometimes it was called town ball and sometimes it was the Massachusetts game. At times it was even called baseball. As the game spread across the country, the rules often change. One change might be in the number of players on each side or in the distance between bases. Other rules changed as well. Little by little though, the game became what we now call baseball. Players stopped trying to soak runners and instead, and instead began to tag them as they do. And here we have an old helmet and an old glove that they used to use. Even though we have always known about rounders, not everyone was convinced that rounders was the origin of baseball. For a long time, people were sure that Abner Doubleday from, he was alive from 1819 to 1893, invented the game. A man named Ab Abner Graves grew up with Abner Doubleday, and after Doubleday died, Graves wrote a letter in which he said that he had been there the day Doubleday invented baseball in Cooperstown, New York in 1839. So when Doubleday was 20 years old, he created baseball. These days though, many historians do not believe that story. They point out that the game Graves described in his letter was really rounders. It even included soaking the runners. The idea that Doubleday invented baseball may be an error. Even so, Cooperstown is important in baseball history because it is the home of a fascinating place that honors the history of baseball, the Baseball Hall of Fame. So the Baseball Hall of Fame. In the beginning, a baseball game was almost a matter of chance. A group of players might meet in a field or park and pull together a couple teams to play a game. Anyone might be in the lineup. Of course, that kind of pickup game still goes on today, but now baseball is much more organized. There are baseball teams at all levels, and some of them are in leagues or groups. There are little league teams for boys and girls of school age. There are adult players who may have regular jobs but play baseball after work too. The company the players players work for may even sponsor the teams. Then there are different levels of professional leagues, all the way up to major leagues. Players in a professional league get paid for playing. In fact, some are paid huge amounts of money. The best players are the highest paid. There are good reasons for this. A pitching ace can help a team win a championship. A batter who hits a lot of home runs can make the difference between losing and winning games. It is these exciting players who someday will be elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. So here we have a picture of the Hall of Fame. 
And here we have a picture of a baseball field and an old um, newspaper clipping, it looks like, of players who are going to play in the game. By the 1930s, baseball was very much as we know it today. The idea of a Hall of Fame came from a man who lived in Cooperstown. Stephen C. Clark's idea was to put together an exhibit of baseball history. It started out small, but it soon grew to be a whole museum dedicated to baseball. The Hall of Fame opened on June 12, 1939. The idea behind it was both to record the history of baseball and to honor its greatest players. 25 men were in the group first elected to the Hall of Fame. 11 of them, 11 of them were still living and all of them attended the opening. The Hall of Fame has grown even more since then as each year more names are added to the list of great players. Every player added to the list has his name and picture on a plaque that now hangs in the Hall of Fame gallery or exhibit hall. In one part of the gallery, visitors can also see some of the treasures from present and past years. There might be the bat a player used to break a home run record or the ball used by a pitcher to throw a perfect game. In a perfect game, the pitcher does not give up even one hit or walk. Then, there are the caps, gloves, and even whole uniforms worn by the best players on their best days. All of it is real. There are no artificial or made-up artifacts. An exhibit of equipment, bats, baseballs, gloves, catcher's masks, shows how these pieces of equipment have changed over the years. Even uniforms have changed as, as have the ballparks themselves. Perhaps the most important thing that has changed, though, is who plays the game. It's everybody's game. At first, only boys and men played baseball. When the first professional leagues were formed, only white men could play in the game. African American men formed their own leagues, though they did not get the attention that the other leagues did. The Negro Leagues had many great players. Beginning in 1947, things changed when Jackie Robinson became the first African American to play in the major leagues. In 1991, the Hall of Fame began to honor the stars of the Negro Leagues. The first to be honored was pitcher Satchel Page, whose real name was Leroy Robert Page. He got his nickname when he earned money carrying satchels or bags at a railroad station in Mobile, Alabama. Page began playing base, professional baseball in the Negro Leagues in 1924. In the exhibition games, he got to pitch against white major league players. New York Yankee star Joe DiMaggio thought Satchel Page was one of the greatest pitchers he had ever faced. And here's a picture of Satchel Page. So Page finally came to the major leagues in 1948. He was much older than the other players were, but he still helped the Cleveland Indians win the pennant and then the World Series that year. Many stories are told about Satchel Paige. One of the best may be about the time he was getting ready to pitch an inning. Instead of worrying about the other teams getting hits, Paige pulled in all his outfielders and had them sit behind him. It was his way of saying that no one was going to hit a ball off his pitches. N no one did because he struck out the next three men. So here we have um, a little timeline. So we start in 1845. So in 1846, first baseball team, Habakkuk in... So the, the first baseball team was formed in Habakkuk, New Jersey. And then in 1867, first pitcher to throw a curveball um, was Candy Cummings. Then in 1869, um, first all-professional team in Cincinnati Red stockings then in 1875 first catcher's mask worn and then 1876 formation of the national league 1885 first chest protector worn 1887 first use of the three strike rule 1889 first use of four ball walk 1901 formation of the american league 1903 was the first World Series, 1921 first Commissioner of Baseball, and then we end here in 1933 first All-Star Game. One story is probably true. When pitchers are not playing, they wait in a section of the ballpark called the bullpen. 
When Page played for the St. Louis Browns in 1951, he had his very own rocking chair in the bullpen. Roberto Clemente was a Roberto Clemente was the first Latino to w enter the Hall of Fame. He was elected only months after word came from the control tower in San Juan, Puerto Rico, that he had lost contact with Clemente's plane. The plane crashed while he was on a mercy mission to help Nicaraguan earthquake victims. In 1970, Major League Baseball had begun presenting an award to honor professional baseball players who helped others. In 1973, that award was renamed the Roberto Clemente Award. <coughs> and here we have a picture of his plaque. So, the women of baseball. There's a special exhibit in the Hall of Fame called Women in Baseball. It tells the story of a league that made its own history called the All-American Girls Baseball League. During World War II, many ball players served in the armed forces. So many men had left baseball that it seemed the season might be canceled. The president of the United States at the time was Franklin Delano Roosevelt and he thought it was important to keep the game going. The people on the home front had to have something to cheer for during those dark days. Women had played softball for years. Now the best players were asked to form a league that would play baseball using men's baseball rules. The first season was in 1943, and by 1946, eight teams were playing 110 games a season. And here we have pictures of some women who used to play baseball in that time. The last game of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League was played in 1954. In 1988, a plaque with the names of 550 women of the league was placed in the Hall of Fame. Baseball Worldwide Even those people who don't follow baseball season know about the World Series. These important games are held every fall. They alternate between the ballparks of two teams that are the National and American League champions. The first team to win four games is the world champion. Here we have a picture of a baseball game. There are so many people though who would question the title of world champion because so far at least the entire baseball world does not take part in the World Series. We know that baseball began in the eastern part of the United States in the 1800s. The game of rounders probably crossed the ocean from England even earlier than that. Since then, baseball had crossed many oceans so that today it is played all over the world. You'll find baseball very far away from Cooperstown in such countries as Japan, Italy, and South Africa. Closer to home, baseball is a major professional sport in Canada and Latin America. Many players cross the oceans too. Baseball players from the United States might play a second season in Japan, and Japanese and Korean players come to the United States to play. Scouts look for players in countries such as the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and Venezuela. There are two major league teams in Canada. Sometimes baseball is called the American National Pastime, which means it is so popular that Americans spend a great deal of time playing and watching it. One thing is certain, baseball is not just a national sport anymore. This favorite game that officially began in the United States has become an international sport. So, this was really good. Um, so my first question is, what's the main idea of the story? So what is the story trying to tell you or teach you? And then, the person who wrote this, um, Judith Irving, so how do you think she feels about the sport? So based on from me reading this to you, what, what, how do you think she feels about baseball? And then my last question is, do you, this is, so in here it said, um, sometimes baseball is called the American national pastime. So do you think other countries other than the United States um, should participate in baseball? So you either answer yes or no, and you have to explain why. And you can either write this all down, um, write down your answers, or you can talk to someone about this. Um, and that's it. Thank you.